Couple last ones. There are 53 qualified NFL offensive tackles and pro football focus, which I like some of their rankings. I don't know. All, I don't always agree with their stuff, especially when it comes to on the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. But they, pro football focus has pass block uh, grades uh, ranking the top tackles in, in pro football. Right. Number one on the list, Trent Williams. Number 33 on the list, Colton McKivitz. Guess who checks in at number 52 on the list? Who? Mike McGlinchey. Mike McGlinchey, coach, is having a rough start to his year with the you Broncos. Don't say. You uh, don't he has say. struggled. He's on pace. Mike McGlinchey's on pace to allow 102 pressures over a 17 game season. Um, talk about paying. This is why. You don't pay average players uh, big time in free agency uh, because, you know, the Niners were smart to let McGlinchey go. Was he was he OK? He was OK. Was he was he really good? No, he's not really good. And he's not really good in pass protection. If anything, I think he's a liability against speed rushers and he's not even old. Imagine what he'll be in two years when he is old. Um, I, to me, the Niners dodged a major bullet by letting McGlinchey walk. And I kind of, even though McKivitz is not great, when you factor in the money saved, um, it's a total win that they went with McKivitz over McGlinchey. All right, man. So if we're going to talk about victory laps, I am so glad that Mike is not here anymore. (laughs) Like. He was just, we spent the first round. If he was a fifth round guy, then it would kind of like be like, yeah, man, it's proud to see what he's turned into, right? But, man, he was born on third base and thought he hit a triple, man. He just was always like putting forth this energy as if he was like this pro bowl, all pro tackle. And it's just like, dude, we got the film. Um, He's struggling as we thought, as we knew. Um, I'm glad they didn't pay him, but the underlying caveat to this is he should have stayed. What should have really happened is, is that Mike McClinchy is not a, a perfect offensive lineman. He's not even like an above average offensive lineman in, in the past game, but he was really good for what we did, right? Especially in the run game. And I can tell you right now, what do you think? Let me ask you this. Do you think the Niners keep Mike if he gives him a hometown discount? Or do you tell or do you think they tell him, hey, Mike, have a good day. We're going to go with Colton. No, I, I think they the whole plan was, I mean, that's why Lynch said that, hey, you know, he went to McGlinchey and said, we may trade you. Because I think they made the decision that, you know, first of all, you don't take a right tackle in the top 10 in the first round. You just don't. And they did. And so that was a low, you know, they could have, uh, they could have gone in a number of different directions, but they liked McGlinchey. Um, I, you know, he, he was, he was okay, but he definitely is, wasn't where, and it's fine on a rookie deal, but as soon as, you know, you get to the next level, it's like, no, 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 no. You're not paying him big time money. But you know, if you look around the league, there's so many teams that have below average offensive lines that offensive linemen are going to get overpaid in free agency, you know, probably for the next five, six, seven years. So, and probably more than that. So it's just, it's one of those things where he's okay, but, um, in free agency, you overpay, and what do you want to overpay for okay? To me, there was one problem that he had. He was good against the run, a good run blocker, but he doesn't have the quickness to kick out against speed rushers. And so what would happen? To get out there, he would lunge. And when you lunge, you lose balance. When you lose balance and you get clubbed on your inside shoulder, you go flying. And that's what we saw last year. We saw a number of uh, instances where he lunged to get outside. He got clubbed on his inside shoulder, and now he's literally parallel to the ground. And people are looking at him like, "What the heck? What's going on there?" So that was his. That's his weakness. But you need it that you know. If you I was an Mike NFL GM, done, honestly, you know what Mike should have done. What's that? Man, just take up boxing. You just need to go to a boxing class. His feet don't make get a his jump hands. rope. Buy a jump a, rope. Thank you. Get a jump rope. Go get some boxing classes. 
Learn how to match your feet with your, it really, it's a coordination issue. That's really is with Mike because he's strong as all get out. He's strong in the run game, right? He actually has power. And he's smart. He's very smart. He loves to talk about how smart he is. But um, even with that, he has a problem with his hands and his feet in the passing game. And he gets, when he starts lunging, most of those times he's not beat. He's just nervous, right? He just, he, 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 he gets in a position in his kick where that DN gets like a hair parallel with him and he opens the gate. He always bails on his technique when shit gets hot. He opens the gate, turns his shoulder, and then it's over. He turns into a turnstile. So uh, anyway, Mike's gone. He's not our issue anymore. But yeah, he sucks. Um, and, he only, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he only sucks because of the money he's getting paid. Like if he was getting paid adequate money, there'd be people defending Mike. Like Mike's okay. Leave Mike alone. Mike's the man. But it's... He sucks because he's getting paid 52 million guaranteed. That's why you suck. You're getting paid a lot of money and you don't live up to your money. So it is what it is.